Hi, this is Dr. Scott Friedman from New York, here to discuss my May focus piece entitled Replacing a Crystal Ball with a Calculator in Predicting Liver Disease Outcomes. My focus piece addresses the findings of two studies in this month's issue of the Journal of Hepatology, both of which address the need for improved accuracy in using either biopsy or non-invasive information to predict outcomes in patients with chronic liver disease. This is becoming an extremely important issue as clinical trials are being developed to assess fibrosis in response to new therapies. And studies want to avoid the need to do repeated liver biopsies to assess efficacy, and we need better non-invasive methods. First, let me start with the paper from the Royal Free Hospital in London addressing the use of the Collagen Proportionate Area, or CPA, information that can be gleaned from biopsy in assessing and predicting liver disease outcomes. In this case, the authors build on prior studies in which they have used digital morphometry to assess or quantify the amount of collagen in a liver biopsy tissue and to compare the findings or the predictive value of this measure to standard liver scoring systems. In essence, what they show very convincingly is that if one quantifies the absolute percentage of collagen using digital morphometry methods rather than standard scoring, this has a much higher predictive value in determining or predicting whether events will occur, such as decompensation in patients with chronic liver disease. So this is an important adjunct to standard biopsy scoring systems, which should not be replaced but should be complemented by digital morphometry methods like this one so that there can be a much more accurate assessment of collagen content in the liver and therefore a much more sensitive prediction of outcomes. Now, of course, doing CPA on liver biopsy still requires biopsy, and that's invasive. And so the second study by Asrani et al. addresses the use of magnetic resonance elastography to predict outcomes and to stratify risk of decompensation. And in this study, what they found was that a stiffness value of MRE greater than 5.8 kilopascals implied a much greater risk of decompensation over the subsequent 27 months. So here we have a non-invasive method. MRE is a more advanced technology that was originated with the transient elastography at the bedside. But MRE offers integration of stiffness across the entire liver and is thought to be more accurate than transient elastography. Of course, this requires that patients be in a radiology suite, which makes application of this test to larger numbers of patients a little more challenging than transient elastography. Nonetheless, the data indicate that a non-invasive assessment of stiffness may be a very good way to stratify patients in terms of their risk of decompensation. So how would this information be used? Well, certainly in clinical practice, a high stiffness level by MRE or transient elastography could indicate to the hepatologist the need for more frequent or vigilant screening for decompensating events such as varices, risk of ascites, encephalopathy, and so forth. It might also indicate a risk, a higher risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. But perhaps a more important implication is that if one could stratify patients at the beginning of a clinical trial for an antifibrotic or a treatment for NASH, for example, that would be a much more accurate way of assessing response to therapy in patients in a controlled clinical trial um, because clinically patients with a high risk of decompensation are not always easily distinguished from mo those more stable patients that have a lower risk of decompensation. All of these issues were discussed intensively in an FDA AASLD workshop last September 2013 in order to help refine guidelines going forward for endpoints in clinical trials using NASH therapies. The issue has become extremely hot these days because of the emergence of drugs that appear to show benefit in patients with NASH, and we need better non-invasive markers as we go forward in designing trials because we cannot build these trials strictly on biopsy indefinitely. So studies like the CPA study from the Royal Free show that if one does biopsy, there are more accurate ways to stage and predict outcomes than simply using conventional scoring systems. And the study by Asrani and colleagues shows that MRE may be a very useful way to stratify the risk of decompensation and to ensure even randomization in clinical trials, as well as providing an adjunct to managing patients and predicting who is likely to decompensate. 
I think these studies herald a new era in liver disease diagnostics, and this is only the beginning, with new therapies emerging for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and for fibrosis, there is an accelerated and heightened need to develop non-invasive measures that can ultimately supplant biopsy and provide accurate information about patient outcomes and response to therapy.